In a previous section, we discussed ways that we could basically redraw the surface, turning it into an all quad shape. However, I wanted to discuss radial symmetry in a way that we could actually create a three-way version because it also introduces interesting modeling concepts whenever it comes to working with radial and mirror and hard ops. So we'll press X and delete this cube. And let me make sure that keystrokes are being displayed. And let's shift A and we will add a cylinder. And with this cylinder, I'm going to press Q and sharpen it. And then we can just shift D, duplicate it, S, Z, and then S, shift, and Z in order to scale it out on everything but the Z. For this, we're just going to shift D and press Y to constrain it to the Y, S, Z, and bring it down. And I always like to have it a little different between both sides just to alternate with different types of solutions. And we're just going to select both of these pieces and press Control Numpad Plus in order to union them. Select these two pieces and Control Numpad Plus to union them together, basically resulting in us creating this shape. From here, I'm going to press Control A and we will turn Visual Geometry to Mesh in order to just apply everything and be done with every modifier without even having to think about it. So from here, I'm just going to look at it in top view and we see how once we're looking at it in top view, everything looks a little flat. I'm going to press Alt V press E in order to turn on viewport shadows and cavities in order to see the shape a little bit better. And from here, I'm going to shift A, add a plane, and let's bring that plane up above this shape. And we'll just scale it up to encompass the entire shape. And I'm going to press Alt X for mirror. And instead of using bisect mod, we're going to press D and we're going to choose bisect. And first I will click the X and I'll click the opposite side of the X. And then I will click the positive side of the Y, leaving me with just a stick. And then we can click and be done with the operation. So you might be wondering why I did all that work for just an edge sticking out the way it is. Well, from here, I can just shift click on radial array in order to radial array around this object's origin. Probably didn't even need to hold shift. Old habits die hard, I suppose. So from here, I can select this shape select my main target and underneath booleans in the Q menu by shift clicking knife we will use knife project and we see that we've now diced this three ways so I'm just going to select all three of these press V to rip it doesn't really matter how we rip it just that it's ripped and by pressing L over this piece we've now isolated it it's just a classic trick I've always been used to just ripping things and canceling in order to keep them we'll press X and delete this empty and with this piece we can now shift click radial array to bring it back around three ways copying the same settings that we used before and click to apply and if we press alt v we now have a three-way version of this and this edge and this edge is going to be considered redundant because having it here kind of stiffens this form which is going to affect subdivision so we'll be talking about that later but for the purposes of this model even though we don't have equally three-way geometry to be working with it is interesting to use this workflow in, in cases when it cannot so from here let's actually I forgot to put some cuts in the circles as well so let's press Control Z and undo a lot until we're back to where we were you know good old undo let me go back to this point and what I want to do is press D and box cutter jump over to circle and activate snapping dots so that way we have snap dots on our shape when it's selected and let's look at our modifiers we have no modifiers so I'm just going to draw a circle and we can press shift T always got to have some circle fun to solve whenever it comes to these if we make it too easy the tutorial will be over too fast we'll press B but we'll press shift F in order to flip it and we see that we're in blender 3.0 which is going to cause issues with the reverse bevel. So this is a bug that's currently being checked into. However, at this time, it requires that you re-add the vertex group and then just reset up the modifier and then you're good to go. So if you run into that in the current 3.0 builds, just know that it is something that we're aware of and has been reported as a bug. So we'll be seeing what the future holds for it, but it is something that's out of our hands because we definitely need derived mesh geometry to keep vertex groups. So in order to avoid that fiasco, I'm just going to press Q, ever scroll to recall this shape. And by jumping to face mode, I can just control click this face to perform a reverse bevel. Now we're actually good to go. So I'm going to press control A, apply everything. We'll look at this from top view, select our knife mesh, select our real mesh, and then just shift click knife in order to project cut our knife in. So I'm just going to select all of these edges, press V, 
deselect everything, press L, and if everything works out, you'll have just your selection. And we can just get rid of everything else. So let's delete that. And we don't even have to radial array it back. It's just a good visual setup for it. Also, I probably should have cut some circles in the back. I should undo it again and then deal with some circles, but I'll spare you guys. So for this, whenever it comes to working with um, retopology and remaking meshes, I'm a big fan of not having any modifiers show up in edit mode. No subdivision showing in edit mode, no um, array or anything, bevel, all of that can be off. Any booleans that show in edit mode also can can be off for this phase because it's real intimate between me and the uh, geometry at this time. So anything that gets in the way, especially subdivision display, that one will show you a not very true version of your mesh. And that's something I've always been against since my beginnings with Blender. So if you saw the last segment, you're already familiar with how I use the select tool, how I will just select an edge, control click another edge, and then shift click mark and press B in order to space it. However, we see that this workflow is a little bit different than the one that was employed in the last video, where I'm actually setting up a little bit more as far as gu uh, guidance edges are concerned because we'll be able to topologically solve this in no time anyway. So I'm gonna press Alt W to jump over to box cutter in edit mode and we'll use knife off the mesh in order to use knife box and we'll just create a line here. And by selecting these two, we can just press J to make a connection. We can add a loop cut up here with control R and then set our snap to vertices. And by pressing GZ, we can snap this precisely to this area so our topology is nice and even. And I'm also going to draw a loop here, bring this down, and we'll do the same thing in this area where I'll press Control R to add a loop, click, and then right click, and then bring it up, snap it. And as far as polygon debug goes, it's not really required for all of this. I mean, we could be very OCD and be looking at it the whole time and talk about how we're eliminating end cons. However, you know, in, in a weird outtake of the first video, I, I feel I sounded a little. Uh, racist because I was talking about you know um, getting getting everything white and removing all the other colors uh, I don't know just a little <laughs> reflection after the video but anyways we're just deleting these faces and then just using f2 that's built into blender which you know if, if anyone ever asked me hey why should I use blender one of my top tens would be f2 because f2 is just so insane so Another thing is that because of the way that we built this mesh, we could actually not have to work on the other half, so you might be wondering why I'm not even bothering. I'm going to shift click mark and we'll press B in order to put a spacer. And because we have a face, let's just extrude it, extrude it again, extrude this. Let's press I to inset it. Let's press X to delete the face. We'll select this whole ring, press control F, grid fill. And I'm not even saving this time, so Blender's probably going to crash randomly, especially when I go inside of the F9s and just start cranking things like Soldier Boy. Oh god. Whatever hotkey I pressed just activated a Camtasia feature, which is always terrible. I've been commenting on their forums about how their hotkeys are actually interfering with Blender, which is the program that I bought the program to record. And stop doing that. I don't know what I'm pressing, but I'm just, whatever it is, it's an important hotkey, and I should probably pause this recording and fix it, but I'm not. I'm just going to roll with the punches because that is life. So we, we extruded this area in and turned it into a proper circle and everything, but for this area, we can't do that because it's a partial. However, that's wrong. We can actually press I to inset, right? But we can press B in order to inset according to the boundary. And then we can actually extrude this up. We'll delete these two faces, take this face, press I again. We see that boundary stays with it, even though we were just using it for just a split second. And let's orient ourselves to this edge and figure out how we're going to solve this. Because when it comes to these, these radial pieces, the solutions are a little bit more elusive, but Still a fun time to be had. So we're also going to be dividing this in half momentarily. So this geometry is really just a placeholder. 
but let's just have some fun with it. And generally, whenever you're working in Blender, you can just tell what's a quad, what's a non-quad, and also this geometry was terrible. So instead of adding that immediately, let's actually extract or extrude this one more time. And we're just gonna select this edge, this edge, this edge, this edge, and this edge, all with Alt. And by shift-clicking mark, we're gonna lose Blender. So with Blender reopened, we'll just bring up our auto saves and see where it left us off at. And it looks like we weren't too far away from where we were. And this would be a good time for us to begin saving the file. So I'm gonna call this quadrify underscore part. And we will just save it. And we see that this is the fourth one in the series of me quadrifying parts for demonstration purposes. And we're just going to begin working as if Blender did not just crash and humiliate me. Just kidding, but crashing is part of life. Um, if you're not crashing Blender, you're not using it hard enough. So after adding possibly too many loops, let's let's rethink that. I'm gonna give it four loops. Four loops is all I need. You know, let's uh, be sane here. If we give a loop for every vert that we see, we'll just be overwhelmed in geometry way too quickly. But if we just get in here and run our gauntlet, same as before. I'm just looking at this, wondering which ones I wanna make into quads, if I need to interject a diamond quad, and more than likely we have successfully made it out of the other side. For the purposes of you, the viewer, being able to follow exactly what's going on, I'm gonna press Q and under operations, enable polygon debug, so that way you can see exactly what's good. And we're just gonna delete this select let's try that again we will press 2 select this loop select this loop right click bridge edge loops and we are done and for dealing with the entirely uh, symmetrical aspect of this because we see that our work could be having um, thus causing us to not have to work on this side however before doing that we probably want to press I X delete faces we'll look at this from top view because I have a save file now, I can habitually press Control S, and we'll press Control F, and activate grid fill, and let's just roll some loops across, and that looks about straight. And let's look at this face, and how do we want to solve this in a way that will work uh, three ways around? Also, I feel like uh, polygon debug gets in the way a little bit. Um, pondering some, some stuff and in, um, in a revisit with it in the future. But for now, we'll just turn it off because really, um, we, we know, we just saw for a moment exactly what our geometry was looking like. So we're fine. We don't have to know exactly what's happening. So we'll just cut like that. And then let's mirror this across, but we'll use bisect mod because we want to get rid of the other half. We don't want to keep it. We don't want to just mirror this half to this half and still have it. We want to completely erase it. So let's just mirror it over. And we see that while this side looks good, the rest of this does not. And that's because of our modifier order. So let's just place this at the top. And now if we press Alt V or uh, if we go under operations and turn on polygon debug, we can see what we're looking at. And I feel like we didn't have all of the mesh showing. Let's try that again. And we just performed a re-bisect just to ensure that we didn't have any edit mode hidden selection not happening or something. But now you see that everything is a quad and looking so far so good. However, this quad isn't a true quad because we have an extra edge that we're gonna to need to get rid of. And so in the end, we're gonna solve this to a proper circle, but just placeholder quads for now. And we see that, what just happened here? Okay, back to collection one, but we want to turn off this display because the shader just is getting in our way. But also we want to undo whatever box cutter maneuver we did to accidentally cut that edge in. And it looks like that's a lot of steps back. So just messing up all of a sudden now. So let's get back to business. This area, let's control shift click sharpen, which will resharp. 
this control shift clicking making Camtasia go crazy this video is already setting itself up to go into the reject pile so after deleting this entire boundary area I've selected this entire boundary area with L thanks to the power of marking seams which was discussed in the last video and what I want to do is press control shift tab make sure it's aligned to vertices and let's just shift D bring this piece down snap it exactly there we'll select everything and just merge vertices by distance which got rid of 40 verts and we also want to press shift N in order to ensure that our normals are facing the right way and we see that we also have an extra cut accidentally made by box cutter there as well so now we are actually approaching the point in which we're near completion let's press Q go back under polygon debug just to see what we're getting as far as geometry goes I feel like this thing is showing an out-of-date result because of no it's not it's definitely showing an accurate result alt X bisect mod Now we're back in business. Not sure what's going on there. We're just going to select all of these edges. Shift click mark to jump into select tool. By pressing B, we can bevel them, giving this a nice spacer. And of course we will resharp just to recalculate our markings. And this Camtasia issue is just terrible. So let's press control A and let's just apply everything. So we're just done. Everything's just applied. We are ready to get on with our lives. So this area that we created was not needed. So I'm just gonna select all of it and press control X, but we see that it's not working. So let's make sure that everything is merged by distance first. Then let's go back and select all of these areas and dissolve them basically giving us back our pier cylinder in fact let's double check and make sure seeing these two loops just kind of throws me off a little bit but it's fine let's delete these faces and I'm going to press E and extrude it we'll look at it from top view and we'll also give it a grid fill but we see that it wasn't able to work and the reason it wasn't able to work is more than likely because the counts were different so grid fill only works if you have a certain count and in our case I feel like we've created some extra loops somehow so with statistics on we see that we have let's go back I am actually going to remove these loops instead, which turns it into that, which I feel is a little bit of an oversimplification of this area. But let's see how that works for us. So I'm going to select all of this. We see that we have 30, meaning I can press extrude and then grid fill. And then all we have to do is just roll it until it's somewhere nice and even. And let's also do the same to this area. I'm just giving these areas reinforcement just because I know that subdivision plays by the currency of loop distance in order to determine the amount of curvature. So still triggering Camtasia. I'm probably not gonna be able to work through that. All right, back in business. So let's control shift click sharpen in order to resharp, no longer having Camtasia affect me. Let's also select this loop and shift click mark and we'll press B to give it some boundary loops just for a little bit of extra protection. And if we were to press Q and go under polygon debug, we see that the only face of contingents left is the bottom. So you know what I'm gonna do? Look at it from top view, but press numpad nine to look at it from bottom view. We see that we have 30 vertices on it. So let's just grid fill. Actually, let's try that again, grid fill. Maybe I am not seeing, okay. It was filling it, but for some reason it was just looking rather 
rather simplified, like it was just me pressing F, which gives it a generic face. So from here, we can press Alt-V, turn off wireframe, also turn off polygon debug because it's not needed. Let's save the file and let's add a level of subdivision and we see that the shape has barely changed. So that is a tragedy. So let's go in and press Q and mark to unmark everything. And we see that there's some areas that are compromised. So if you don't have pr protection loops going on, it's going to get a little bit tough. So whenever I'm working with subdivision, I always toggle off subdivision display in edit mode just because it simplifies life. And I'm just going to select these loops, shift click mark, press B. And some of these areas don't even feel like they're connected. Let's try doing it with this area. All right, so we were able to add a loop there. Let's select these two, press B. And something feels strange about the way that the bevels behave in here. Maybe I was just overshooting it. We can just press Control R to place loops there. And we see that this area is looking fine. However, we have to replicate that three more times around the shape. and. Me being myself, I would not want to do that and have a variable result happening around the shape. I would want something that's actually predictable. So another thing is auto smooth. Let's toggle off auto smooth. So that way we can see this shape in its most pure subdivided form because auto smooth isn't always required whenever it comes to subdivision display. And we could basically re radial sh the shape all over again but let's not do that. Instead, I'm going to delete that loop. We're going to delete this loop. We're going to select all the loops we intend to reinforce. And you're just going to have to be mad at me for having different loops in this area than I did in the primary area. But I could always re-radial this around, but then I would be redissolving loops and recreating the holes that are in the middle. So with that, we've now created a three-way version of that same piece that we were talking about previously. So all in all, that is the process whenever it comes to dealing with radial array and dealing with radial pieces that aren't always able to be mirrored in a general way like you would normally expect. Sometimes you have to get a little bit more creative with the modifiers as you can see in this particular situation. And for a little bit of added fun, let's also talk about quad remesher for a moment. So I'm going to shift D, duplicate this object and we'll move it along the Y and I'm going to disable subdivision and we're going to press Q and go into operations and choose clean mesh. And from here, let's shift click sharpen to basically activate auto smooth. And we've now simplified this mesh to its simplest state. So undoing all of our beautiful subdivision work, we've now converted this into a shape that's worthy of a bevel modifier. So whenever it comes to converting a shape to subdivision, you could always do it from this messy Boolean state. However, it can be a little variable. And my favorite way to do it is to press Q and click on bevel. And inside of bevel, we could press three to give ourselves a profile one bevel which will basically give us a reinforcement of our marked edges. And so as you can see me doing, I'm just adding it ever so slight just to deal with these marked edges. And really for this example, let's look at this from top view. And I'm going to shift A, bring in a mesh plane. And if we're going to do this, we might as well give it a fair shot. So I'm going to press Alt X. And instead of bisect mod, I'm going to Alt scroll to bisect and just shift click every other axis and then click the axis I want to keep. And now I have this single object and let's click radial array without holding any additional keys and roll it down to three and we're good to go. So I'm just going to select both of these shapes, go under Boolean, shift click on knife in order to use knife project and we'll just hide that three way we created. And I'm going to grab all of these edges just like before, press V to rip and then press L and we see that this time it did not work out. So that's always good. It's good to have a case where things don't work out in order to show you guys how you it can work out because a big thing about Blender is rolling with the punches. Things aren't gonna always work out. So when they don't, you just gotta be resourceful and be quick-witted and think on your feet to 
figure out the next way to get to where you're trying to go because just because there's an extraction doesn't mean you can stop what you're doing and just call it a day just throw in a towel you know instead you gotta just be mindful and think of the next solution that you're going to attempt because where there's a will there's a way and while everything can't be handled in the same conventional way as you would expect with other software blender requires a little extra creativity so I'm really setting this mesh up in this case because I'm dissolving and giving offsets to these areas. I mean, I've actually never done this before. I just felt that this is what's probably needed to make this work out the way that I want it to. And so far, so good. We look at the circles and everything is just awry. So let's turn off bevel and edit mode so we can see the truth. This edge isn't going to work. What we're going to need is a line going straight down the middle to give integrity to all of our end guns because this is just solving for an end gun. So let's uh, solve it better. Well, here's I have mesh machine enabled. So with mesh machine, it's backwards. So that means which way do I want to take it? I want to take it that way. Either way, even if I were to have used hard ops and mirror and symmetry, it's the same result. Um, even though mesh machine is taken over for this session, that's fine. Let's all text again. Might as well use them to the fullest for this video. Um, and just like that, we now have better, what I call in-gon geometry. You know, just because booleans are being used and in-gons are in place, doesn't mean that in-gon geometry doesn't have its own set of rules that you should probably adhere to in order to get the best out of your experience. And I look at in-gons a lot like hold the phone geometry, like temporary geometry that's there for me to accomplish a specific goal or mean and then from there I can always just convert it into quads because it's basically just big flat empty geometry unless you got curved in gons that's a whole nother story and you should probably send it back to hell but in these cases let's continue so this mesh is now set up for us to actually convert it into subdivision which is the goal is to do it without using all the fancy tricks we did here so I'm just going to click radial array which will give us three and what we learned from before is that these aren't going to merge unless we go in and we click merge or we add a merge or a weld modifier on top but really uh clicking on merge will do it when it comes to a radial array because it just works uh normally first to last merging is a little bit more troublesome but it's a long story so anyways we're looking at this mesh and you're probably thinking gee this looks terrible this area kind of looks terrible there's a really harsh junction between these two let's turn off shadow and we see that there still is a very harsh junction i mean this is like mesh of light and mesh of shadow so let's go into add modifier and put a weld and we see that weld is still needed so weld is one of my favorites but because we have our boundaries protected all around basically what we would mark as sharps this means that if i were to select this mesh and add a triangulate just like before we've now triangulated this mesh i wish there was a quadrilate um, modifier because this would actually turn into quads very nicely and what i mean by that is if we shift duplicated this off to the side like we're looking at and we selected all this and we pressed alt j well that's not bad at all i mean we add a subdivision modifier on it and press alt v and you would not guess that I just bashed this together using the most hackish workflows and then just converted it using modifiers. I mean, we press Alt V, this is what we're looking at. The important thing about subdivision to know and that I always remind people is if you apply one level, everything's a quad. Right now I turned off optimal display, which will show us what the true geometry being generated is gonna look like. And we see that there's an abundance of poles, but there is not a single triangle and it, not a single end gun. Subdivision, just applying it once, just having your mesh survive at once will turn everything into a quad. Not the most beautiful quad, but it'll turn it into a quad. In fact, more than likely, you'll end up with these nasty poles everywhere where you choose to take such a inadequate solution when it comes to these sort of things. But really, we're looking at all these loops coming down and coming out, and then they're just terminating at the single point on a flat face so really it's not the worst solution ever in all honesty if we tap into edit mode we're just looking at what we're dealing with and i want to turn off auto smooth for this just so we can look at this truly as a subdivision mesh 
and this is our result and this is our manually created result I mean we still need to get in and actually place some loops all over this thing you know just to uh, tighten up certain areas especially areas that begin having geometric turns you always want to have loops to just kind of protect those from going wayward but here I am coming back to my original mesh but if we look at this this is a pretty good result and all I did was triangulate it and then quadrilate it so anyways back to this thing so let's say we we don't have a quadrilate uh, modifier and we're stuck with just triangulate well that's fine too because like I said subdivision is going to turn everything into a quad whether it likes it or not so let's toggle off auto smooth and this is what we're looking at so if we toggle off wireframe things actually look pretty good with this mesh this mesh looks almost passable I mean this area is a little little compromised if we turn off optimal display we can see what the subdivision is truly going to give us if we were to apply it everything would be turned into a quad but everything would also be turned inside out really terribly kind of beyond usability so this isn't really the best way to go it really looks a little um, degenerative as far as um, how it's going to hold the surface together over time I mean really over time like this is going to go bad after a hundred years right um, so I would see that on a model and be like hey <laughs> what's up with that you couldn't you get rid of some of these loops man the geometry looks terrible I would make fun of such a thing so just just showing that in action so let's actually take this mesh shift D duplicate it because the goal was to actually get to the topic of um, get to the topic of quad remesh almost forgot its name let's add let's let's keep the triangle but let's also smart apply it so that way we don't have to deal with any modifiers and this is our mesh in fact we also have all of our boundary edges added so let's press Q and we'll hit it with a sharpen so that way every sharp edge receives a marking because quad remesher just does good whenever you give it an edge to go with so let's take this press N and I actually modified my quad remesh to have a panel that says just Q or QM because quad remesh is too big of a word for something I rarely go to but let's turn off uh, detect hard edges by angle and we don't want any symmetry I never use symmetry anyways and default settings yellow actually let's let's uh, go up to 90 and then we'll yellow I don't know if it's a yellow if we just change it from the defaults but just like that we've now given this a quad surface and you know every time this happens I'm impressed but every time I see it I can tell that this isn't the result that any sane human would retopologize and get the result of because there's a certain areas that the OCD of an artist would make them fight it and there's certain things that would generally be straight that I know the OCD of a general artist even an amateur would want to try to straighten up so um, seeing this sort of result makes me think back on this King of the Hill episode where Bobby got testicular torsion and I'll just leave it at that but that's what we're looking at with this mesh is a little bit of um, torsion However, it is a very good looking mesh, but let's press Alt V to go back to wireframe and let's remove all sharp markings. So this is our true mesh, right? Let's press control three and subdivide it. This is our result. This is what you're gonna send into the render. You know, when you just slap a subdivision on it. And to some that that's probably suitable. I mean, it definitely works whenever it comes to dealing with these transitions. However, I'm a big fan of having, you know, well-defined edges whenever it comes to these things. I mean, I could always just grab edges of the result and just slide them in. But we see the subdivision edit mode, especially with 3, is a little heavy, so let's do it manually. Let's Let's help out quad remesher. My goal isn't to make videos where I'm like showing how, how terrible this thing is. Just showing that, um, just want to remind people that if you think you're going to run around and drop a bunch of quad remesh models on someone and they won't be none the wiser, um, they're going to wonder why when you press control R to add an edge loop around the very perimeter that we just get, I don't even know what to call that. I don't even know what term term to use for that, but 
let's select this entire loop all around. Let's use our buddy mark to press B and add a boundary loop and we'll just call that a day. And so I'm just going to select these areas as loops because I can just use shift tilde to limit that selection. And you know, every video is always punctuated by people having issues logging into your accounts, like I'm an account lord. That's where you need to probably use the recovery account procedures on your chosen purchase platform, but no problem. I will pause this video and point him there. So after selecting all these edges, let's also select these in the middle. And just the fact that I'm able to select these edges is a testament to the power of quad remesher. I mean, after my experience with Q remesher, I was like, I will never trust an automated topological solution. But this solution visually gives you a result that you're like, wow, that might even be better than what I would have done. And, you know, that's something strange to see from a machine. So now we've actually sharpened this part up using some additional loops to just kind of help it out, which keeps things sharp in some areas. It's just a way that I like to work. I like to have well-defined sharp areas on a model. I don't know. Anyways, now let's look at these. So that process was probably like two or three minutes really. But if we look at this, you know, which one looks the best, you know, really, uh, we have went through a plethora of solutions for this. And like I said, if, if I move too fast for this, it's because this is literally a follow-up for a video I did a couple of videos ago that you should also watch if you're unfamiliar with all the topics of discussion today. But let's take a moment and fly around using the space mouse. Just look at our topology. So... Let's look at this one. This one is just with pair modifiers. This one's with us solving modifiers. You know, just solving by requadulating what could be there. But with all the faces that turn back into quads after being turned into tries, it does show that, you know, even Triangulate having the ability to turn things into quads would be great. So this is the result that this whole video was about, was me showing my own topological conversion skills and comparing it against the machine, the behemoth, the destroyer of worlds and artists known as quad remesher, which is this one. And this time we even added some loops to help it out, but these torsion areas on the side are just such a ponder. Like maybe the computer's trying to tell us something like, hey, maybe a simple solution is better. And maybe having these poles here are for the best. I mean, we press Alt V and we turn it off and we look at this, is it a bad result? It's really a uh, philosophical question, I mean, at least to me, but I'm probably overthinking it. But with that, I believe we could end this, and I'll thank everyone for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. So I was preparing to close this video up. However, one last topic we should talk about is Quadrify. So I'm going to shift e the modified mesh, and we're just going to move it over on the Y, but we see that we have the radial array attached to it. A uh, strange thing about radial array, or more an interesting tidbit about radial array, is when it does when it comes to actually deleting a mesh, you can use uniquify with shift click, which will uniquify everything attached to it. So we could basically uniquify the radial array as well. And from here, I'm just going to come out of full screen mode, and we're going to take this single object into local just so we can talk about it. So first, I'm going to remove the subdivision, the triangulate. Maybe we should leave the triangulate, and we could also leave the bevel, however we could also get rid of it as well. I'm going to shift click in order to activate auto smooth by shift clicking sharpen. And let's just press control A visual geometry to mesh and it turned out we didn't need it after all. And let's just go under sculpt mode and under quadraflow in the Q menu we're just going to click on OK and allow it to calculate. Quadraflow is also located over in, let's see where is it, in under geometry data, no, remesh. So here you could also deal with voxel remesh, but when it comes to quadraflow, it is literally, um, 
hardly worth discussing because it is so rudimentary at this time. So I just leave it out because it's it's more like a um, parody of, of remeshing in general. However, we do see that this loop was kept. Let's undo that and let's jump to edit mode. I accidentally pressed control R while in sculpt mode, which activated remesh. In edit mode, I can activate loop cut and we see that we do have some flows going that we could utilize and actually reinforce if we wanted to reinforce this form. In fact, we have a loop here as well. So there's a lot that we could work with, but there's a lot that we can't work with and there's a lot that's actually destroyed. So let's undo until we get back to this point. And so we'll change it over to quad and this time instead of 4,000, let's give it 8,000 and let's choose to preserve the sharp, preserve the mesh boundary smooth the normals and we'll click OK and give it a fair shot. Can't just show it looking terrible and leave it at that. And now we're actually getting somewhere, sort of. If, let's press tab and go into edit mode and let's press control R and we can follow this loop and we see that whenever we go down one of these loops it just circumnavigates the whole form but it feels like it did try to preserve the edges in some respects with some particular areas but just wanted to um, close the video on that note. However, let's control Z and do it again. Let's quadruflow this time. Let's give it 15,000 because we really need it to survive this operation. And more than likely, I didn't even have to use quadruflow from sculpt mode. It's just a habit of mine. I could have probably also used it from object mode. I'll just test that in a moment. However, once you crank this thing up to about 15,000, it does get a little bit slower, but the result is sculptable, definitely. I mean, it's going to require some sculpting in order to resolve these areas. You know, need to tap that a little bit, tap that with shift, a little tap it with shift, get this thing back in business, you know. However, the more that we smooth, the more that we are compromising certain areas of our shape, but also I see a little bit of improvement happening there. So maybe Quadraflow could benefit from a little bit of smoothing afterwards. You know, if you got in here like a Z brusher and really smooth this, you could really get this to a fine result, even from this level of geometry. But I just wanted to end the video talking about Quadraflow and its capabilities with the shape of this sort.